Good evening, everyone. Um, hope you're enjoying your time here at Trailhead DX. OK. Um, I'm Aditya. I work as a developer evangelist at Salesforce in the APAC region. Today, uh, thank you for joining me, uh, where we go over how you can simplify IoT integrations with uh, IFT. Now, before I proceed, uh, just a forward-looking statement. Please make any of your purchasing decisions based on what is publicly available and not what I might say today. So with that, let's get started. So you, you would have seen the slide in the keynote given by Parker Harris. So we are in the fourth industrial revolution now, which is transforming the way we live, work, and communicate with one another. And in the fourth industrial revolution, there are different technologies that are driving it. So one is robotics, uh, VR, artificial intelligence, and most importantly, IoT. So with IoT, all of us are connected together. So there are billions of devices out there, sensors, apps, and all of them communicate with one another over the internet. And that is how you get this connection available. So let's say if I take an example of uh, Google. So let's, let's just say you say, OK, Google, turn on my TV. Then what's happening internally is the Google service is communicating with your smart TV or the smart plug over internet. So without the internet, none of this would be possible. Now Salesforce is also a service that is connected to the internet. So now what you can do is you can try to get Salesforce talking to these billions of devices. And we are going to see um, some interesting possibilities. So on the screen, you can see some fun use cases. Like let's say your opportunity is one in Salesforce. And if you happen to have a smart bulb, you can get that flickering just for entertainment purposes or for more business oriented use cases where Let's say you have a Twitter handle, and a customer is going to post tweets on it with a certain hashtag. You might want to automatically convert them to cases so that one of your agent can follow up. So maybe a hashtag might say the customer service experience was bad. So you might want to follow up with them. And again, um, not just one way, but the other way around, you can actually have Google communicate with Salesforce. So you can say, OK, Google, get me my tasks from Salesforce in the morning. So the moment you wake up and run your routine, it will actually show you how many tasks you have from Salesforce. So there are different ways in which you can accomplish all of this, but we are specifically going to talk about one of the services today. But before going to that, really, what is the mechanism with which the communication happens in IoT is using the publish subscribe model which is one of the integration patterns. So what this model says is that there is one publisher who keeps sending out messages, and there are n number of subscribers who can listen to those messages. So what's going to happen? Whenever the publisher wants to say something, it sends out a message. And whoever is listening to it gets that message, and they run their own processes. So it is up to the subscriber to do what they want with a given message. So in this kind of a mechanism, you'll see that there are a number of publishers. And each publisher might send a different kind of message. There might be a different format, different fields that they want to send. And it becomes difficult for you to process all of those if you're building out an integration from scratch. So that is where we are going to talk about a service called IFT, which is actually an abbreviation for if this, then that. So the purpose of this. Um, is that it, it is able to connect two services to one another on a common platform. So you, as an end user, do not need to understand what is the kind of message that each service is sending. If is going to take care of that. It has got all these pre-built connectors, which I'm going to show you in a while. But what you need to know is if it has connectors for many apps, so you have Uber, Twitter, Google, including Salesforce, and also devices. So not just applications, but if you want, like I give you the example of a smart bulb, or if you have Nest devices, that is smart home security, IFT has connectors for all of those. So in the IFT world, these apps and devices together are called as services. OK, so a service is something that you connect. And now the way you define the integration is actually very simple. Just like the way it says, if this, then that, the integration is also going to look like that. So if service 1, then service 2. So in the, in the example on the screen, we have connected Twitter 
to Gmail. So the use case for this is every time there is a new hashtag post on Twitter, I want to be able to notify it on my email. So for this, the very simple way you can define the integration is say if Twitter, then Gmail. And a few terminology again, both of them as you know are services, but the one after if is called a trigger because that is what is going to trigger your whole process. And then the second service is called as an action because that is at the receiving end. So Twitter is a publisher and Gmail is a subscriber in this process. Now the whole integration is called as an applet. So you define multiple, when you say you define multiple applets, it is actually you're defining multiple integrations. Now how does it really work with Salesforce? So now Salesforce can be both a publisher and a subscriber. So if you have an if applet in place, then at one end you have Salesforce and at the other end you have external services. So now let's say an external service acts as a trigger. Then the external service is going to send a message which is going to go through the if applet and it's going to come to Salesforce by means of the standard APIs. So you have the standard APIs for record creation in Salesforce. So that is what is being used to send the information back into Salesforce. Now when you want Salesforce to act as a trigger, so you have inserted a record and then you want to notify a device of it, then here is where there are a little more number of steps where the first thing is you'll have to install an if managed package. So this is available for free on the app exchange. And what this does is this managed package gives you an object called as if event. So if you're familiar with platform events, this works exactly the same. It's just that it is not a platform event. So if event is a custom object and any message that you want to send out from Salesforce, you insert it as a record inside the if event object. We are going to look at it in a demo, but this is just at a high level. And once you do this, the managed package has logic which internally communicates to a Heroku app and all of that which has been written already, so you need not worry about that. It's just that one, all, all you need to do is insert a record into this object and then it communicates with the applet which in turn communicates with the external service. So this is the process which we are going to look at right now in a demo. So in this demo, uh, this is the IFT homepage. So you go to if.com and you sign up. It's free completely. Uh, so once you sign up, you'll be taken to this homepage which shows you a bunch of applets that are already present. So once you create an applet, it is reusable across. So you define the integration once and you use that integration elsewhere. So these are all the things that are done by n number of developers all across the globe. Now, I was all talking about different services that are available. So if you go to this, page. Um, okay. Um, sorry, my bad. Okay. Um, so this is the home page that I was talking about. Uh, sorry for that. And you have all of these applets that are pre-built by other developers. And here is where you have the list of services. And you'll notice the list is quite huge. You have appliances, blinds, and there's a quite a bunch of things that you can explore on your own time. Now that you have your services, the very first step that you need to do is you'll have to authenticate to these services. Because now when I'm connecting Twitter to Salesforce, let's say, I need to know what is the username that I use to log into Twitter and what is the username I use to log into Salesforce. So my very first step is going to be to authenticate to them, which I can do by searching for a service. And once I go to the detail, I click on settings. So here is where I can authenticate to that service. I give the username that I want to use. And in the example that I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk about an applet. Whenever you tweet with a certain hashtag, it's going to create a case in Salesforce. So that is uh, the demo. Um, so in that, I have authenticated Twitter. And it's the same thing I do with Salesforce as well. When I click on settings, you'll see that I have connected an org. So it's going to show me who is the user I have connected and what is the my domain that I have connected. So once you have this in place, you can define a new applet straight away by going to new applet from the menu. And here, this is the statement that you're going to build. So if this, where the first statement is Twitter, and Twitter shows you a bunch of triggers. So when is it that you want to trigger an action? So here, new tweet from search is what I'll select and say hashtag TDX19. 
So whenever a user tweets with TDX19, this is going to run. I create a trigger. Just one click, it's done. Now the next one, I want to create this as a case in Salesforce. So in that, I'm going to select Salesforce. And here you again have a bunch of actions that are available. I'm going to choose insert a record because I want to insert a case. And once I do this, you'll be shown with a list of S objects that is available. And this is something that is going to come from the org that you have authenticated in the previous step. So here I choose case. And here you can give a bunch of uh, values for it. So field name, let's say subject. And once I want to insert the field value, here I can add ingredients. So if you're familiar with the advanced formula fields where you can just select a field and then the relevant formula appears, it's the same thing here. And the ingredient, I want to add whatever is the text of the tweet. So I just click text and this comes over here. So the same thing in the description, maybe I want to add the link to the tweet. So again, I click on add ingredient and say link to tweet. Let me enter a few more fields. Um, let's say source or origin rather. Origin is Twitter. So I can define up to a maximum of five fields, which is currently a limitation um, from the applet's end. So you'll have to just be aware of that when you're defining an action. So I just create this action. So what this does, I'm, I'm saying that I'm creating a case with subject as this and the remaining field values. And I just click Finish. So that's, that's all as the steps that I have executed. And now my applet is running. So if any of you can feel free to tweet with the given hashtag, we are going to look at the output, which I can do as well. Very simple tweet. So now this integration is not real time. It is near real time. So you, you cannot see the case immediately after you tweet. It will take a couple of seconds, which we'll take a look at a, a bit later. Now let me show you the second use case where I want Salesforce to act as a trigger. So now in here, I'm going to tell you about a scenario where the customer runs a travel agency, and um, not just a travel agency, let's say anything. Okay, and then they have opportunities that are there. And whenever an opportunity is one, they want to send out some swag to the customer on their account's address. And now to ship out the swag, I have tied up with an external vendor who is using Google Sheets um, to actually identify who is the customer and what are the swags that are available. And now my purpose is that I want to integrate both of these. I want this list to be updated in real time. So whenever an opportunity is one in Salesforce, I want this Google Sheet to be updated. So for that, again, I can create a new applet. But before doing that, I'm going to show you how it works in Salesforce. If you remember the architecture diagram, the first step is that I install this managed package, which is a free package by Salesforce Labs. And then once I install it, I'll be able to see this if events as an object. And any event that you want to trigger, you just click new. And then you type in whatever is the message that you want to send, whatever is the object type. And more importantly, what is the type of event? So this is going to get important, which I'll show you later. Now, I want to be able to create this event automatically whenever an opportunity is one, which is why I have created a process builder uh, process using process builder where whenever an opportunity is one, I'm inserting a new record into this object with all of these field values. So in here I'm giving the event a name and whatever is the message that I want to trigger out, what is the related object ID? So I need to be able to relate my message to what is the record that is firing the message. And finally type, I'm hard coding it to swag for now. The reason is now when I try to um, create a new applet, and in the trigger, I choose Salesforce, and I choose this trigger. The only thing it's going to ask me is what is the event type. So what this really allows me to do is I can use the same object to fire different kinds of events, and then I can have different applets handle these different kind of events. 
So I just say swag over here and I create a trigger. And then in that, I can choose Google Slides. Uh, just slide. Actually sheets. Um, and in here I want to add a row to the spreadsheet. And here whatever is my spreadsheet's name, which I'm going to get from this, which is swag shipment. And then whatever is the row content that I want. So here the timestamp is present and these three lines are separators for each column. And then I have the message. And what if I want to also add the object ID to my sheet? Uh, I do that and here I have the related object ID. And then I create the action. And then this is also done. So here we have defined two integrations, which both of them are running. And if I go back to my Salesforce instance and first go to cases, let's see if there are any new tweets. There are a lot too many tweets after 4.15, after I've activated my service. So you'll see every tweet has been created as a case. And this is the one that I've done. And somebody has done if test as well, which is good. <laughs> Thomas one, thank you. And now coming into the next uh, part of the demo, we have open opportunities. And once I close this opportunity is when I want to send out a shipment. So I'm doing it for Edge Emergency Generator of Edge Communications. I'll select a closed stage and do closed one and click on Save. So now this is going to technically add a new entry in some time into my sheet, which has come in right away with the address, phone number, and the field reference. So this is how I can simplify the whole process of integration with just clicks. I did not write a single line of code to do these complex integrations. I'm not saying this is the only way to do these integrations, but this is one of the many ways. Uh, finally, going back to my slides, there are a few considerations that you'll have to keep in mind. Uh, so like obviously I have told you, if it is a free service, but not always. Um, the first thing is a trigger can have only one action. You would have observed if this, then that. So it's not then these. So you can't have one trigger and have multiple actions. If you want to have multiple actions, define multiple applets. So using the applet is free, but the services are not. So you can define that if then condition, but whatever is a service that you're using, you have authenticated to that service. And in order to authenticate, you need to have credentials to that. And sometimes services charge for those credentials. And for each of these credentials, you'll have to ensure the appropriate licenses are purchased. And when it comes to limits, all the limits are based on the services themselves. So for example, the Twitter service that I have shown you, I have given hashtag TDX19. So every time it searches for that hashtag, it can only process a maximum of 15 tweets at once. So that is a limitation imposed by Twitter, not by the if applet as such. So these are some of the considerations. And I've shown you a bunch of services. And if you happen to have a device that is not falling under these services, and you want to create a service for your own device that you want to expose to people, you can use the IFT platform, which is again paid. Um, so this is all the considerations that you'll have to keep in mind. And finally, coming to the references, I have used Process Builder. So I've just put in a link to the Lightning Flow and what are the other automations that are possible with just clicks. And how to use a Salesforce service on IFT, that is the hyperlink to that. You can go to that website and then you can get all of the documentation related to how you can use uh, things with Salesforce. And with that, and one minute left, I conclude my presentation. So thank you all for attending. And if you have any further questions, I'll be happy to answer them once I get down the stage. Thank you.